Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Hope you've all been doing well. In this video, I wanted to talk to you guys about some recent leaks regarding new motherboards for AMD's upcoming Ryzen 3000 CPUs based on Zen 2. Earlier this week, there were some new motherboard product listings discovered on a Russian distributor's online portal by a user on Twitter by the name of Komachi. In those product listings, there were some various motherboards from Gigabyte, which included some B450, X470 chipset boards, which are already on the market, but there were also some X570 and X499 chipset motherboards included as well, which was definitely exciting to see as this could indicate that the launch for these products might be around the corner. The X570 chipset is what AMD will be using to upgrade or replace the currently existing X470 boards for their mainstream Ryzen platform. I mean, that shouldn't really be news to anyone, as they did do this before with the X370 chipset boards once the second gen CPUs came out. Therefore, a logical guess could have really figured that one out. The same goes for the X499 chipset, as we'll be seeing those boards roll out once we get third gen Threadripper CPUs. Although, I wasn't expecting to see anything related to third gen Threadripper this early, as those CPUs for HEDT will be coming out much later in the year. Now if you take a closer look at the list of motherboards included and their models, we can see that for the X570 chipset boards, Gigabyte will probably release the Aorus Extreme, Master, Ultra, Elite, Pro, and Gaming X motherboards. I say probably because none of this is actually official and could be subjected to change, so take it with a grain of salt. Now since the release of the 9th gen Intel processors, Gigabyte have actually changed the naming scheme of their motherboards. Before they used to use the word gaming, followed by a number to indicate the tier or quality of the motherboard. The Gaming 7 would be their flagship high-end board for enthusiasts and extreme overclockers, the Gaming 5 for performance, and Gaming 3 and Pro models for the entry level and budget users. So as you guys can see from this list, and if you go back and take a look at their Z390 boards, they don't do that anymore. They've kind of taken the same approach to naming their products as other motherboard vendors do, such as Asus with their Crosshair, Strict Series, Tough Series, MSI with Gaming Pro Carbon, Gaming Edge, and you've also got ASRock with boards like the Tai Chi and Fatality. So if you were trying to figure out which category these boards would fall under, think of the Gaming X and Pro models as the equivalent to the entry-level Gaming and Gaming 3 boards, with the Aorus Elite and Ultra being equivalent to a Gaming 5 motherboard, then the Gaming 7 motherboards being replaced with the Master. With the Aorus Extreme being the top of the line motherboard with pretty much all the bells and whistles, whether it's extreme overclocking, lots of PCI Express and M.2 slots for multiple configurations, a plethora of I.O. interfaces, and so on and so forth. What's really interesting here though is that if you take a look at some of Gigabyte's motherboard lineups from the past, specifically the X470 chipset for example, the most recent one, the top end board was the Gaming 7 motherboard. For the X370 lineup, it was the Gaming K7 motherboard. There was never anything above that board in terms of quality and features. And this doesn't just go for Gigabyte. Asus's top end board for AMD was the Crosshair Hero 7 for X470, nothing beyond that, and MSI's was I believe the Gaming Pro Carbon. Then, if you compare that with the selection of motherboards the vendors offered for Intel's chipsets, whether it's the Z370, Z390, etc., there was just a lot more motherboards available and to a much higher extent. For example, both Gigabyte and MSI currently offer Z390 boards that are currently over 700 Canadian dollars for a mainstream platform nonetheless, both of which are totally overkill for most users in that segment, but they went ahead and did it anyways. I mean, this only makes sense though, with Intel currently having the higher market share and mind share, of course the motherboard manufacturers would be paying attention to the bigger brand, as opposed to the smaller guy that only recently made a comeback. I always felt as if there was a lot more attention of detail given to Intel from motherboard manufacturers, as opposed to the selection we have available for AMD CPUs. However, now I feel like that's changing. As you guys just recently saw from the list, Gigabyte will now be including an Aorus Extreme 570 motherboard as well into the lineup, one which I'm sure will be just as overkill as the Z390 was for the mainstream platform. Along with Gigabyte, Asus and MSI also seem to be positively changing their attitudes towards AMD's mainstream platform. There was a list also recently leaked for Asus's motherboards that included some X570 chipset motherboards, along with the Crosshair 8 Hero, they will also be including the Crosshair 8 Formula board. Right now, Asus have a Formula motherboard for Intel's Z390 chipset that has integrated water cooling options for the VRMs. A board like that wasn't really available for AM4. There was also an engineering sample leak on the Sci Software Sander benchmark results database of a Matisse CPU. 
I'm not going to get into the results for this video because that's not really the topic, but the motherboard that the CP was tested on was an MSI X570 creation. MSI had only released their creation motherboards for the high-end desktop segment, both for AMD and Intel, the X399 and X299 chipsets respectively. But it looks like they'll be bringing over the creation series to AMD's mainstream platform for the 3000 series. Overall, it looks like this time around there's going to be a wide selection of AM4 motherboards available when they launch the new CPUs, and that's really fantastic. This is actually one of the main reasons why I believe that the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs based on Zen 2 are going to be great CPUs that will be very competitive against the competition. I mean, they've always held that core count advantage, one which I'm sure be, they'll will be increasing with the new generation, but seeing these highly overbuilt motherboards being brought over to AM4 could mean that overclocking may finally be exciting with these new chips. Of course, I might be wrong and they might actually have to build the motherboards this way due to some power uh, issues, so on and so forth, but I don't think that'll be the case with 7 nanometers. Regardless, I'm just glad to see that this time around, the motherboard guys seem to be taking a good approach to AMD's platform, and you know what, it doesn't really feel like an afterthought. I plan on upgrading to a third generation Ryzen processor in the future, hopefully, and one of the boards that I'll be checking out will likely be the Aorus Master. I really like what they did with the Z390 version of the board, so hopefully we see a similar board brought over to AM4, and it's not just marketing and naming fluff. I've had pretty good experience with Gigabyte boards in the past, in fact, my previous three builds were all using their boards, and I had little to no issues with them. Therefore, I'll probably be sticking with what's been working with me so far. But that's all I wanted to talk to you guys about in this video. If there's more noteworthy information that comes out later, or if I find out anything, I'll, I'll definitely be making another video about it. So if you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description for my other videos and ways to support the channel. And if you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. See you guys in the next one. Take care.